Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I want to thank each of you for joining with us for this week's daily Bible study coming from Charlene's Outreach Ministries. We have a powerful and wonderful lesson for today. Our lesson is, are you unleashing your talents? Are you unleashing your talents? And it's coming from Matthew 25, verse 14 to 30. I want, I want to ask you to look into this thought-provoking parable of the talents, a timeless story that challenges us to reflect on the way we utilize the gifts and resources entrusted to us by our Creator. With this simple yet profound question, are you unleashing your talents? Jesus invites us to explore the depths of stewardship faith, and initiative. As we delve into this captivating narrative, we uncover invaluable lessons on seizing opportunities, stepping out in courage, stepping out in faith, and embracing divine rewards. Join us on this journey of discovery as we unveil the secrets of the talents and their profound implication for our lives of service and devotion. We're going to get ready and move into our lesson, but first we're going to have prayer. Dear God in heaven, we thank you, Father, that you are an awesome and wonderful God. We thank you that you are our all in all. We thank you for making a way out of nowhere. We thank you for leading and guiding us in your true path of righteousness, Father. Lord, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Lord, we lift you up, Father, that because you are our creator, you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are our all in all, Father. Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for going with us. When we go out in, come in, and when we go out, we thank you for being our way maker. We thank you, Father, for opening doors that need to be opened and closing those that need to be closed. We thank you, Father, for being with us as we go up and down the dangerous highway day and night, Father. Lord, I give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, Father. Lord, we ask you to forgive us of our sins, Father. And, 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 and Father, as we go forward in your will and your word, Father, Lord, we ask that through your great grace and mercy that, that each and every one at the sound of my voice, that their mind, soul, spirit, and body is healed, whole, and complete. As you said in your word, Father, by your stripes, we are healed and we walk in that healing, Father. Lord, we ask that you would open our eyes that we see, our ears that we hear, and give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in your word, Father, that we it may prick our hearts and we be doers of your word and not hearers only. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, we're going to move into our lesson. Are you unleashing your talents? Coming from uh, the parable of the talents come from Matthew uh, 25, verse 14 to 30. Verse 14 to 18 reads, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then who had, he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's talents. Now we know over the years that uh, those that have heard this before, uh, that this is the uh, Lord Jesus giving uh, uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, giving us our talents, uh, what we have received from the Lord. Are we a singer? Are we a praise dancer? Are we uh, a preacher, a minister, a teacher? Are we a uh, uh, are we the ones that the greeters? Are we uh, the ones that clean the facility? Whatever God has given us, we are to use it as unto 
to, unto the glory of God. Amen. Are we putting our all into it? Are we making a, a use of what God has given us? Amen. Are we hiding it because we think it's not an, an, enough and so we are not going to do anything with it? Where do we stand with the talents, with the things that God has given us? Have we began to move forward? Because before we began to do something, God cannot do anything with us. Before we make a plan to 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 do something, to uh, begin in our talents, to uh, write out a a a a a a diaphragm of what it may take to walk in our talents, then we may not be moving anywhere. But if we have, if we moved, have we got stuck in a certain place or area in that with that talent? Have we got to a place that we don't feel we can do any better or do any more? Seek the Lord and he will open up your eyes that you receive information and understanding that you may gain more understanding to move forward in whatever that talent may be. This parable also teaches that when the Lord returns, there will be true and false servants, those that use their talents and those that didn't. The story revolves around a man who, before going on a journey, assembled his own servants and gave to each varied amounts of money according to his own ability. And as they said, uh, his own servant, which means those that, who has proclaimed Christ as their Lord and Savior, that means uh, you have accepted Christ, so now he is expecting you to be fruitful and multiply with that talent. One got five talents and another got two, and the last one, uh, the last got one. They were to use this money to bring income to the master. The man with five talents earned another five, and the man who uh, with two uh, double heels also but the man with one went and dug a hole and buried it. It is not difficult to see that Christ is the master and the long journey is the inter-advent period. The three servants are Israelites living during the tribulation period, responsible to represent the interest of the absent Lord. They are given responsibility according to their individual abilities. We have been given talents according to each of our abilities. Have we used it? Have we began to walk with it and do something with it? Uh, 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 is it because you think it's small, it's insignificant? Amen. We do. We never know where we stand uh, with what God has given us until we began to utilize it. And then as we begin to utilize it, then he will begin to grow us in that talent. Amen. Verse 19 to 23 says, After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents beside them. His Lord said to them, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. We see that they are given uh, uh, appraisal uh, uh, of what they have done with their talents, not the number of what they had, not the number of what they received, but what uh, uh, what they how they utilize what they received. Whether it was five or two, they both uh, went forth and utilized those two two talents, those are uh, uh, five talents, and double what they had received. When we began to use what God has given us, then he can increase what we have. But if we are only sitting on it and holding it back, then we cannot uh, uh, grow those talents without uh, 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 utilizing the ones he says given us first. Amen. After a long time, the Lord came back and settled accounts with them this this depicts the second advent. The first two received exactly the same 
commendations. Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things and I will make you ruler over many things. He didn't say because one had received five that you get a bigger reward or, or that you are better than the other. No, he said both of them had done a good and faithful job. They had done a well done, good done job as when he uh, created the world, he said, this is good. Amen. He said, enter into the joy of your Lord. The test of their service was not was the test of their service uh, was not how much they earned, but how hard they tried. Each used his ability fully and earned 100 percent. These percent true believers represent true believers whose reward is to enjoy the blessings of the messianic kingdom. Amen. The kingdom that is to come. Amen. We have a kingdom here. This is our kingdom. We have dominion and Lord over this kingdom here. What are we doing with the dominion that we have on this earth? Amen. Verse 24 and 25 said, Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, he, there, you have what is yours. Because he used excuses not to do what he was asked to do. He used excuses, and excuses does not count. He expect you to utilize what you get. You, you, he said it himself. He expects to see more. You gained where you did not plow. You, you did not sow. You gained. Uh, you expect to gain uh, from. Uh, uh, what you have put out. So I, you expected to gain from me what you had put out and what I earned with it. I didn't even attempt to put anything with it. I didn't even attempt to use what you've given me. So I just put it in a hole and hid it. Have we put our blessings in a hole and not utilize what God has given us. I hate to say this, but I believe COVID has brought out a lot of people that has began to utilize what God has given them. Amen. Instead of running and, 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 and hiding behind a desk or in a building, uh, they have began to utilize the gifts God has put inside of them, inside of us. Amen. The third servant had nothing but insult and excuses for his master. He accused him of being hard and unreasonable, reaping where he had not sown and gathering where he had not scattered seed. He excused himself on the basis that paralyzed with fear, and fear can destroy us. If we, if we allow fear, fear can cause us to end up in the same predicament as this servant that did nothing but put his talent in a hole. Fear can cause us, and that's only Satan uh, working, uh, allowing our inadequacies to overpower our abilities, and we must not allow him to do such things in our life. He buried his his talent. This sir was doubtless an unbeliever. He he didn't have faith in what he could use, that he was able to use what he had. And then, man, as I was saying, we uh, learned to utilize what we have inside of us instead of depending on everybody else when when this COVID, when COVID hit. Amen. We learned to move forward. Amen. No genuine servant would uh entertain such thoughts of his master as he talked about that you know you are uh, unfair you you expect to receive where you didn't now if you utilize what you have I mean as we look at the disciples each and every disciple that Jesus picked they were doing something they were busy amen so God expect us to be doing something in order for him to in increase what we have amen verse 26 and 27 says but his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming, 
I would have received back my own with interest. Do something with what he has given you. Utilize it in some form or fashion. And he knows when it's from the heart. So pray to him and seek him for the ability and the understanding to utilize what you have. Because as you go to him, uh, and it seems like there's nothing to do. And you ask him, Lord, how can I utilize what you've given me? Show me how to utilize what you've given me. I'm willing to step out and go forward with what you've given me. And then go forward in it. Be a doer of what he tells you to do, what he brings to your mind, what he brings uh, to your spirit. Amen. Because you can know for sure that it is from the Lord because uh, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But, but Jesus I right, say I've come that you would make that that, that that to give you life and that, that more abundantly that what he gives you will bring life to you will bring uh, abundance to you will move out fear and you will walk past fear and move into into uh, uh, being a a person of, 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 of doing his will and his way. Amen. His Lord rebuked him as a wicked and lazy, too lazy to try, too lazy to even get uh, put himself together and ex, 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 uh, try to do something. Having such thoughts of his master, why hadn't he deposited his money with the bankers to earn interest? Incidentally, in verse 26, the master is not agreeing with the charges against him. Rather, he is saying, if that's the kind of master you thought I am, all the more reason to have put the talent to work. Your words condemn you, not excuse you. What you said brings uh, brings judgment down on yourself. You know I expected more. So because you knew I expected more, I expect more. Amen. Verse 28 and 29. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talents. For to everyone who has more will be given and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even that he has will be taken away. And so when we say, well, I don't have no talent. No, you ain't looking. You got a talent. He gave each of us a talent. Every person that's on this universe has a talent. We just have to seek God if we don't know what it is and go forward in that talent. Amen. Because there is something within you that God has put that you can utilize and be a blessing to others with. Amen. Seek God and he will open your eyes to see what the uh, uh, what your talent is. Seek God and he will give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in the, what you need to be doing and show you. But you got to make a step toward attempting to go forward. Amen. If this man had earned one talent with his, with his talent, he would have received the same commendation as the other. Instead, all he had to show for his life was a hole in the ground. His talent was taken and given to the man with ten talent. He said, those that have will be given more. Amen. If you are doing something with what you have, he will increase that what you have. Amen. This follows a fixed law in the spiritual realm. To everyone who has more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, if you feel that you don't have anything, you ain't got nothing, and you ain't gonna be, and that that you have gonna be taken away because you have something, but you won't accept it. You won't move on it. And so with that being said, then that that you have will be taken away. Amen. So we don't want what we have to be taken away. Even what he has will be taken away. Those who desire to be used for God's glory are given the means. Those that accept Christ as their Lord and Savior, he expects each and every person that claims Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior to be doing something, he expects, expects fruit from us. Amen. And that fruit is in our lives and how we live out our lives and how we are a blessing to others. The more they do, the more they are enabled to do for him. Conversely, we lose what we don't use. Atrophy is the reward of indolence. 
We know that atrophy in anything, even in a person that uh, uh, if they lose their leg, they, 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 the 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 muscle and all that uh, wastes away. Hey, Amen. Uh, uh, when you have a talent and you don't use it and, and you don't recognize it and you don't want to recognize it because you don't read, you don't recognize it because you're not seeking to find out what that talent is. Move forward. Uh, 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 begin to ask questions. Begin to look. Begin to study the word and he will open up avenues of understanding in your script, in your mind and in your spirit. Amen. The mention of the bankers in, in verse 27 suggests that if we cannot use our possession, possessions for the Lord, we should turn them over to others who can. We, we can give them to, we can utilize them through, through others. The banker in this case may be missionaries, Bible societies, Christian publishers. If the Lord has blessed you to have finance, if the Lord has, has blessed you to have a, a, a big house, if the Lord has blessed you to have extra food, turn it over to someone else. Give, if you don't want to cook it, give it to somebody that can cook it and, and make them a meal. Uh, what is always something we can do. Gospel radio programs, etc. In a world like ours, there is no excuse for leaving money idle. Leaving whatever we have idle is always something that we can do with it. Amen. Pearson Carefully recommends timid souls unfitted for bold and independent service in behalf of the kingdom may link their incapacity to the capacity and sagacity of others who will make their gifts and possessions of use to the master and his church. The steward uh, uh, has money, or uh, it may be other gifts that can be made of use, but he lacks faith and for and foresight, practical energy, and wisdom. The Lord's exchanges can show him how to get gain for the for the master. The church. Uh, partly exists that the strength of one member may help the uh, help the weakness of another, and that by cooperation of all, the power of the least and weakest may be increased. Amen. And as we were saying, as we uh, read our word. Uh, our eyes will be open. So you may not begin, you may not understand it when you begin, but keep reading. Keep reading and reread it again and reread it again. Of course, make sure that you pray before you begin your reading to ask the Lord to open your eyes for understand, open, give you wisdom and knowledge in his word, and he will do so. Verse 30 says, and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Know that there is consequences for doing nothing. There's consequences for sitting on your hands and, and saying, I don't have any gifts. I don't have anything. We all have a gift. We all have a talent. And the the unprofitable servant was cast out, excluded from the kingdom. He shared the anguish fate of the wicked. It was not his failure to invest the talent that condemned him. Rather, his lack of good works showed that he lacked saving faith. He did not want to put any effort into trying. We have to first put forth the effort and God will help us. God will lead us and guide us. Amen. This is a wonderful and powerful lesson. I pray you meditate on this lesson and have a wonderful and blessed day. God bless you.